Hi, I'm Tyler and today I'm going to show you how I make a toy spinning top. Let's get started. This is a piece of hard maple that I picked up earlier today from Macbeth Hardwoods. It's an 8x4. I paid roughly $32 for it. It's great for using on the lathe to make small projects or anything else. You can get a lot of material out of it. It's about 8 inches wide and 3 inches tall. 1 foot 6 long. I'm going to cut it directly in half so I can get hopefully six square blocks out of the wood for turning and making different projects. I'm going to use my sliding miter saw to cut this down right in half. It's uh, one foot six and three eighths, so we'll mark it at uh, nine and three sixteenths. Should give us a pretty close center. We're going to use the table saw now to cut a three by three block and get it prepared for the lathe. Only to cut half the depth so that the saw can handle the thick stock easier. We're a little bit wide one way, so we're going to take the joiner and take about an eighth off of it to clean up the lap from the blade. The block's about an eighth wide on the side that I cut. Now we're over at the joiner. I'm going to take two passes at a sixteenth of an inch to reduce it that eighth of an inch. Now we've got our block down to size. I'm going to use one of Woodpecker's center finder fulls. Um, I really like them. They're really easy to use um, and they give you a pretty good center most times on round or square stock. What you can do with them to make sure that you get center is mark one side on one corner and then you mark the other corner and continue around the block until you've done all four corners. So now that I've made the four marks, you end up usually with four lines that have a square in the middle and the dead center of that square is your actual true center of the block. Repeat the pop process on the other side. Now I'm going to use an automatic center crunch to put a small divot in the wood. Many companies make these and they're a really convenient tool. Now I have my center punch. I can make a circle on the wood so I know how far to trim the corners off to prepare it for the lathe. And this is what you should end up with. Now I'm going to tilt the head of the saw to a 45 and trim the corners. Now we have our block of wood prepared to the lathe. The corners have been cut off. It's going to make it much easier to turn down to round and much more pleasant. I like to uh, square stock up or get it round with a surf spur center to get it prepared for the chuck when I cut the tenon in it. Back into our center hole. I like to line the lines up with our marks that we made from the center finder. Tap it in, then it'll pop back out. You've got marks. I can install the spur center into the chuck. center. Lock it into place. Bring it forward into our other dimple. And then watch the other side and drive it into the teeth. I'm going to use a Woodpecker's Ultra Shear full size tool with a square end. That's a, the best tool I think to use to round stock. I love using carbide tools and they have a lot of advantages.
and we can check it for around. There's still a little bit of flat there and there. So we'll take her a little bit deeper. We're pretty round there now. Now that we have our end true trued up, I'm going to take the same square end shear tool to cut the tenon to place it in the chuck. Now we're to this stage. The tenon's been cut. I've squared up the end of the stock. There's a little nipple on the end we won't have to worry about right now because it'll go into the recess of the chuck. Bring the tail stock back up to start shaping. Now that we have it reversed in the chuck, we're going to bring the tail stock back up, give it some more stability while we start the shaping process. Then to start the shaping, I'm going to use a, another ultra shear woodpecker tool that has a uh, sharp edge on it. It's not one of their negative rakes. This will get us a good start to the shaping. I'm going to start to shape the end, get rid of this corner, and then start to carve back the middle where the handle is going to be. So now that we have this deep, deep valley carved and started, I'm going to move, remove the tail stalk and finish the face most of the way on the rough shape. Um, after the rough shape's been finished, I'm going to bring the tail stock back up and continue to shape the inside so that we have as much support as we can. If you go too deep here at first, before you finish your face, you're going to end up with a lot of vibration here and possibly the part could break and come at you. Uh, another thing also, when you're carving a valley like this, especially with a carbide tool that's sharp, you always want to make sweeps and you never want your edges to get too high or to get to become the same radius as the tip of your tool. Otherwise you're going to be cutting on the edge which will cause a uh, kickback on the lathe. Um, if you may, more or less if you think about it like anywhere that the tool's making cut there has to be an extraneous amount of support directly under the tool and so if you're out here on this edge trying to make a heavy cut it will bite and try to roll the tool out of your hand and when that happens it's going to ruin the wood could potentially hurt yourself or shatter the carbide. So now we've moved the tool rest over, angled the top and that will give me good access to the bottom to put a nice clean radius on the bottom for the bottom of the top. It's best to stay 90 degrees away from anywhere that you're cutting so that you don't have kickbacks. Um, now we'll shape the top. So now we have a really good start to the face. This is pretty much the shape that I'm looking for. I've left about an eighth of an inch or a three sixteenths of a landing on the end because later on we're going to run a starting drill into the end to create a recess for a BB to be glued in so it gives low resistance as the top spins. The finish on the top is I'm pretty satisfied with the end of it right now. I'm going to speed the lathe up to about 1500 RPMs and then take a shave cut with the same tool and it'll end up with a much smoother finish that's easier for sanding. Now we're going to do a couple of shear cuts or shave cuts on the front to get the finish a little bit smoother and make it easier to sand. Throughout the process I've had the lathe running at about 1200 RPMs. We're going to speed it up to about 15. It'll produce a better, better finish for sanding. The finish is about twice as good. You notice that I hold, held the tool at about a 45 degree angle and when you perform that you want to see dust, not necessarily shavings. 
Now that I'm happy with the shape of the end of the top or the bottom of the top, I'm happy with the cut finish of it. I'm going to bring the tail stop back up, re-secure the part, and then hollow out the rest of the middle and create the handle. You always want to use a tail stop and any time that you can when turning, especially when taking heavy hollowing cuts so that the part's stabilized and it doesn't break. Now that I have it hollowed out and we're getting close and I'm liking the edge of this, I like the shape of that, I'm going to continue that shallow taper up into the handle. I want to remove material here and get down to close diameter of what my uh, handle is going to be, which is roughly a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch to three sixteenths is where I like the handles for the tops. We'll readjust the rest in a little closer and then I'm going to use the same parting tool to get down to close diameter. Now that I have the handle about half the diameter, of what I want. I'm going to come back in and finish this back ed edge off to leave as much support in here as I can while I'm finishing this edge. Now that I have the handle about half the diameter of what I want, I'm going to come back in here on this edge and clean this edge up and do the rest of the final cleanup in here before I thin the handle out to the final dimension to leave as much stability in the middle as I can while I clean this outside edge up. Another thing to note, whenever you're turning something on a lathe, any sort of vibration you hear when you're cutting is bad, so when it starts to vibrate, either reduce the cut depth or slow the lathe down. Now that I'm happy with the shape of the inside and the finished cut on the inside, I'll take the handle down to finish size. So now that I have the handle the size that I would like it, another thing to make note of is that whenever you're carving the inside of something like this or cutting the inside of a part and you are getting vibration, make sure to take light cuts. You'll notice that I used a parting tool to gouge out most of it and then went back to a square edge cut so that I could get a nice square straight handle on the top. Just something to keep note of though anytime you're turning, vibration's bad. Now I'm going to use this sanding pack to finish the top. I really like them. They're a hundred foot lengths of cloth sandpaper. It's made by Wood River. There's quite a few other companies out there that make them. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon and from your local um, turning supply store. It comes with a hundred grit, 240, 320, 400, and 600. I like to use about eight inch strips. I'm going to start with 150 and then work my way all the way to 600. Now we have the top sanded all the way through 600 grit. I'm happy with the finish that's on it. We're going to apply a finish. This I like to use a Malin's high build friction polish and then an old t-shirt. Wore out ones are the best. Just cut little pieces out of it. And then we're going to put it on with the lathe turning and then continue to apply the product until it starts to dry. And it'll continue to build up as it dries with the lathe on and leave a really nice high polished finish. 
An amount about like that is about perfect for a part this big. Okay, now I have the Jacobson's chuck put back into the tailstop, and I'm going to use a starter drill. It's an eighth inch starter drill to put a slight countersunk hole in the bottom so that I can glue this BB into place into the end, which will cre create almost zero friction on the tip of the top and allow it to spin longer. And as you do this step, just keep checking the depth until you are satisfied or happy with the depth for the BB. Depth, the depth was almost all of the eighth inch starting drill. Now I'll remove the tail stock, sand the BB and prepare it to glue. I'm going to take 120 grit sandpaper and hold the BB like this with the paper folded over and rub the inside of the BB's edge that's going to be placed inside the block only. And once I get that sanded to where I'm satisfied with it, it doesn't take much, just a little bit of scuffs. Then I'm going to use a super glue that's made by Slickfast and also an accelerator so that it cures it instantly as I put it in. place a small dab inside the wood and spray the BB with the activator. Give it a couple of seconds to cure. Should be in there pretty good. Now I'll use the parting tool to part off the spinning top. Okay, now that we have it parted off the lathe, it leaves a little nipple on the end of the top. I'm going to take it out to a belt sander and finish the top, sand the nipple off, and bevel the edge slightly. Okay, now I have the top of the top finished off. I rubbed it with a little bit of uh, tri-poly polish to give it a little bit of a shine. I'm really pleased with the way that it turned out. There is a little bit of discoloration on the surface of the top and on the surface of the bottom, and it has to do with not using sanding sealer. If you would have used sanding sealer on this prior to putting the high build Malin's friction polish on, it would get rid of the inconsistency in color in the top of it, but other than that I'm pretty pleased and it functions. I'm not sponsored by any of the tools or products that we used in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe for future videos, and what do you want to see me make next? Comment down below.